Well, I have a lot of thoughts about the fat F. <laughs> um, and just how, uh, well, we just did actually, uh, on Block Digest, we did an interview with Nick Carter that should be published relatively soon. And we did talk about the, I, I just, I just find it, cause when all of this stuff is announced, so oh, they have a new draft and it's gonna be law and it's gonna be terrible. We're, it's all gonna suck. And I had to keep telling people that, you know, part of the reason we're all freaking out about this is because that we believe these types of organizations actually have power in the first place when they're not even, like, they don't even have the, you know, the badge of being democratically elected. They're just literally, they're, they're just talk groups. They don't have any actual authority. They make recommendations. And they make all of these threats about how if you don't follow our recommendations, there will be diplomatic consequences. And it's like, okay, but but who enforces those diplomatic consequences? Like this, none of these people are elected. They don't have a lawmaking authority. They just make recommendations, and their recommendations tend to be really awful and go towards more financial surveillance. So the first order of business is to just remind people that this is not law. These are recommendations. Um, and all of the banks who are preemptively implementing things that they say should be, I mean, in general, they're just giant red flags. That's a giant red flag to me that I wouldn't want to be involved with those banks or those businesses because it just, it just shows so little gumption that they're like it's especially if it's not even something they want to do or they're against it, but they do it anyway. Um, it just makes me feel like, well, when, <laughs> what would it like if you're going to cave to such a tiny threat? Um, you're going to cave to much bigger threats in the future. And I don't want to give you my money. I don't think anyone should give you money if you're not willing to stand up for your users and their privacy. That just doesn't make sense to me. So. Like our response to these kinds of, you know, kind of waves of banks blocking people or implementing these compliance procedures is just to say, well, we're not going to do business with you anymore because you're, you're, you're clearly, you know, just waving the white flag and not standing up for any principles that I care about. So I'm not going to give you money anymore. Um, you know. Uh, I believe in the Cypherpunks book, uh, Julian Assange said, where you put your money is where you put your power. So stop putting your money <laughs> with people who don't represent your principles, especially people who don't even represent you at all and give you advice that they're not, they don't have any authority to actually enforce. Yeah, I think that's, that's very pressing, uh, and it's kind of a shame that we see a lot of the companies in the Bitcoin space being regulated uh, to the eyeballs. Uh, and w with a lot of privacy bad practices. Um, w what do you think about the new addition of this travel rule uh, that you need to prove the ownership of a address uh, before withdrawing your Bitcoin from a custodian? Um, I mean, well, I just think it's, I think it's unsustainable and largely unenforceable. Um, because like you can say this is my address, but it could be someone else's address. Like the only way to prove that an address is actually yours is if you were to provide them with a signature or something to, but even that, like they, how do you prove that you made a signature? You could have asked the person that you were sending, you're sending the Bitcoin to, to just generate a signature that says anything they want. Like unless, unless you get them on video live signing a sig, like signing this address to say that it's theirs, you, I don't see how they're going to enforce that. That's like kind of too much work for them to do. Um, so one, it's unenforceable. Two, again, it's just more unnecessary financial surveillance that like even the compliance people are now complaining that this is too much. We have too much information that we don't know how to deal with. When the compliance people are complaining, um, that's when you know things are getting really stupid um, because like, uh, and what I find amazing is you know, once again, you have these blockchain analysis companies saying, oh, they're just putting their hands up and saying, all we do is we analyze the blockchain. It's all publicly available information. Don't be mad at us. But then on the other hand, what they're actually doing in the, they're, they're basically lobbying groups. 
Um, like Cypher Trace was interviewed by the CEO of Cypher Trace was interviewed by Laura Shin and he was giving rather detailed information about the schedule of the, this, uh, fat F guidance. Uh, like when that would, you know, when, when the review period or the public consultation would close, when there would be group meetings, like he's, it sounds like Cypher Trace is very involved in these negotiations and these recommendations. So you have these companies who are pretending like, oh, we're not doing anything. We're just analyzing data. It's like, no, you're actually using your resources to, to not only not stop increasing financial surveillance, but to encourage it because it fits your business model. Like these, even if right now, even if you have a blockchain analysis company or blockchain surveillance company that says, oh, we only analyze the blockchain in a few years time, it might make more sense for them to be handling KYC data. And I think CypherTrace actually has um, tools and services that do that already. So it fits within their business model to advocate for more financial surveillance because that's what they already do uh, in a commercial setting. But now they're trying to get governments to basically force people to listen to them and use their tools. And I think that's disgusting 